You know, just casually, I was watching a National Film Board piece last night on public television about the gas chambers during the war. Oh, my goodness, it's difficult to forget and forgive. And I know that some of you people bring this kind of thing into that era, and there's, there's no comparison in any way, shape, or form. You're certainly not a liberated person, are you? You're oh, a chauvinist of the highest order. I feel liberated, no. I feel very liberated. I mean, if you were a woman and you wanted an abortion, you wouldn't have one. I mean, if you were in a position to have an abortion. You wouldn't want the freedom of choice given to you, would you? No, no, I, yeah, that's true. I was brought up differently. Perhaps it's been ingrained in me from the time I was a child, but that's all right. I'm happy that uh, there are still some people that believe in what I okay, believe Okay, back in. to business. I see you sticking your big foot in your mouth over Volrich's salary, and then you backed off when you laid down salary guidelines for municipalities. <laughs> Why do you insist on in causing all this trouble? Are you going to make your salary guide question? Are you going to make your salary guidelines for municipal elected people stick? Yeah, well, they're guidelines. They are guidelines. They always were guidelines. They were never put forth to, for any other purpose than to be guidelines. The mistake, perhaps, is that I went into too much detail. I mailed it out to the executive directors of the UBCM, the Union of BC Municipalities, and it got leaked. But, uh, you know, maybe I gave too much detail as an example of what could be done. But I still believe in guidelines. I still think it's very difficult for the average individual in a municipality to in any way determine whether the elected mayor or alderman are getting their share or what they might be paid in some other jurisdiction. There's no means of comparing. Similarly, for municipal people, it's very often hard to make uh, Do your guidelines their have, the, have the force of law? No. They don't. No, but they certainly have the force of the people being aware, and and that obviously of what would. Father Van der Zam says it should be. That's correct. You're going to embarrass them into working for cheap rates. Cheap rates? I've been there. I don't think it's cheap. But you're wealthy. You turned down your three thousand dollar increase. In fact, you paid back the money, did you not? No, I didn't pay back the money. No, I didn't get the money. You turned it down. Yeah. Was a 30% I don't know increase. how much it was, but certainly, yeah, 40% was what they claimed it to be at the time. I don't exactly recall what it was. But, you know, I don't believe that uh, Vancouver municipal Sun, uh, people are underpaid, no, and I think they have uh, lots of other little uh, benefits. The Vancouver Sun, that great division of Southern Press, uh, Southern Press, that's right. Remember, it used to be homo yes, many years yes, ago. Yes. And then Ken Thompson got it, Max Bell and company, and now Southern's on it. They've got 100% freedom of speech. We've seen that. Said it in their editorial. We have been guaranteed by Mr. Southam 100% freedom of speech. Our integrity survives. Anyway, they say that you're dumb interfering in municipal prerogatives. Prerog prerogatives. 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 Mm -hmm. Prerogatives. Which is it? Prerogatives. Prerogatives. Are you dumb? No, I, uh, you know, that's their opinion, and if I were to be upset about what the Vancouver Sun writes, I'd be upset all the time. It doesn't bother me anymore as to, it never did really, as to what the columnist or the editorials say. In For fact, that matter, I measure their, uh, I measure their abilities by some of their writings, and it doesn't speak too well for them either. In fact, the fewer the newspapers, the less your work will be examined. No, I'm not saying that either. I think there ought to be plenty of newspapers, and uh, we see what's happening in Vancouver is going quite the opposite way, but no, there ought to be plenty of media, and I'm certainly one who's all in support of putting it before the people and expressing an opinion on whatever the issue, and that's fair enough. You'll always survive because you're very good on the 25-second television clip. You can keep it short when you have to. That's your biggest strength, Willie. <laughs> um, how much, oh, you got, you got an increase this year, didn't you? Uh, as MLA, yeah. we get uh, three quarters of the average industrial wage increase for the province for the preceding year, oh, annually. Bill Van der Zam, how much of an increase did I you get? I don't know exactly what it amounted to. I guess it possibly came to something like 9%. Uh, how much do you get as an MLA now, Bill Van der Zam? As an MLA, yeah. we get uh, $32,000. How much do you get additional as a cabinet minister? Uh, to in total, what I get as an MLA and what I get as a cabinet minister would come to, I'm guessing now, about 58000 58, some of it tax-free. One-third of the 32 is tax-free. 
Have you availed yourself of the highly generous dental plan your teeth look so good, which civil servants and cabinet ministers have, and MLAs? Yes, yes, but... How much do you pay to get a new bridge uh, a new filling? Well, I don't think those bridges are covered, unfortunately, but fillings are covered. And I haven't 100%. had any fillings for the last while. Do you have the gall to go and claim dental work on the government plan? Well, I'm a member of the plan. I pay into it. If I don't use it, I, uh, you know, they hopefully come out okay. That plan should uh, be reasonably self-supporting. I, I think it's appalling. You people having dental coverage, especially cabinet ministers, wealthy ones. We gotta have keeper look after our teeth. Pay for it out your own pocket. Good for you. I like you, your style. You. I know. I you like should. your style. That's right. You shouldn't take welfare from the government in the form of free dental treatment. But I, you see, I work for the government naturally, and I'm sure that you must get the same benefit at BCTV, do you not? No, I don't. I am a contractor. Oh. I pay for my own teeth. 100%. <laughs> yeah, but look at all the tax benefits. What tax benefits? Being a contractor. Every nickel I make, make is up in front of the table, Willie Van Der Zandt. Well, I don't doubt that. Webster after the break. Shut up. Oh, seeing you here, Bill. You know, I don't like what you're doing. And not very, very keen on your government these days. In fact, I think you're passing all the, or thinking of passing all the old powerful acts, like BCUC, possibly financial administration, planning act, all the rest of it. And the NDP are sitting in the weeds saying, my goodness gracious me, they're p passing, they're going to pass our socialist legislation. When we get in after social credit blows apart, we won't even have to look like left-wingers, because all the legislation will be there. Aren't you afraid of that? When you look at the powers, well, you know, potentially? You can't help some of the things and some of the speculation. Certainly, there's a lot of people out there who are saying, you did away with the Environmental and Land Use Secretariat of Cabinet. You did away with it because it was NDP. So you're yeah, saying we brought in one because the NDP would bring it in, we're bringing it in, and they'll inherit it. They'll use it. You know, it works both ways, I guess. We go on, we give the best government possible. Next question. Okay. If I have a piece of a garden which has been covered with plastic and mulched and killed, is it too late at this time of the year to rake up the mulch, lift the plastic, and put down instant turf? Now that's a very good question. <laughs> By all means, put down instant turf, but I'll tell you what's better for you still. What's that? Get out there and till the land, rake it level, roll it flat, rake it again and seed it. Can I get a government grant to help me to do this? No, you don't get a government grant. You do it yourself. Yeah. Private initiative. What's wrong with instant turf? Well, instant turf is okay, but you know, like I say, the exercise will do you good, and I still think you get a better lawn seeding your own. That's my opinion. Yeah, I suppose so. I'm not, I'm not asking for my own personal benefit. Really. No, well, I appreciate that, and I'm sure the listeners will like some uh, sanity brought into the program by talking a little about gardening. I'm you not, want to tell I'm them not what asking, company of course, I'm with. for my own personal benefit. No, I will not. Oh. I understand that yours is called the Barrett Landscaping Company. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the Leggett Landfill <laughs> Company. How about some phones? You don't get anywhere these days. Oh, yes. Uh, how uh, much were you beaten by in the leadership race the last time? Remember when you used to be a liberal and you oh, went social credit? Oh, I ran credit? for a liberal, yeah. You were a liberal leader at one I was, time. No, I ran for the liberal leadership. Who beat you for the li liberal leadership? Anderson. David Anderson. No kidding. He beat you for the... Li That's correct. Where is yes. David now? Well, I don't know exactly where he is, but maybe he's not so dumb. Possibly he's enjoying life out and there who doing his you? own thing. I don't know. When you who's switched, to say? When you switched tracks, who beat you for the social credit leadership? I didn't run for that. You didn't? No. You never, never actually no. came up above the surface. No, no actually I didn't. No. You're going to run the next time? I'm, uh, am I going to run again? Oh, that's a long ways if off. Bill you know, we don't have an election for three or four years. Two and a half years. Two and a half. Okay. When Bill Bennett disappears from the scene, because he's he said something about two terms, uh, will you put yourself forward as social credit leader? 
Oh, there could be a number of people putting themselves forth, and I could well be one of them. Okay. Who knows? On the Webster program today, Bill Van der Zam said, I, Bill Van der Zam, could well be in the running for the social credit leadership if Bill Bennett is no longer on the stage. Well, you is see, that that's the problem with, you know, you wouldn't want to do that to uh, my comments on this show, turn them into a news item as if I was giving it, giving it such prominence. That's the difficulty, that's how, isn't it? That's how, that's we, how it's done. That's how, we, how, it's, yeah. how it's done. That's how it's that's done. That's how we twist your I know, it's tough. <laughs> I ask you a question. Is it not a fact that? And you say it could be. Yeah. And I say, Bill Van Der Zyme is pondering the possibility that if Bill Ben isn't there, he might run for the social yeah. credit leadership, that's, which that's is not really what you no, said. No, that's correct. I'm glad you You were much more that. evasive than that. Much more evasive. Much it's more on, indefinite. That's right. My, it's only the sparkle in my eyes, in your eyes, that tells me the answer is, you're bloody right. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> you want to spoil the program with some phone calls? Sure, go ahead. No, I won't spoil it. Sure. That camera, and speak up loud. And no chit-chat. Okay. Straight into it. Go ahead to Bill Van der Zandt. Uh, Good morning, Jack. From Sam and Arm. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. Good morning. Van good morning. I have to agree with you, Mr. Uh, Webster, that they should have something in there to stop the counselors from uh, making a big fortune on things. Because look right here in Salmon Arm, our counselor Alf Ames, he put up a building 10 months before they had the hearing to eliminate part of that. Yeah, just a minute. And, now, uh, just a moment. Hold on a second, please. I cannot take comments about individuals on the air which may reflect or impugn their integrity. This is the other side of the Webster coin without knowing the facts, but I'm glad you called me, even though I killed your comments. Next one. And I, I just killed them to be on the safe side. Well, you know, this happens regularly just before election time. We get a, an awful lot of calls oh, saying Willie, I'm not talking about All election right. time. All right. No, no it does. There's an election, municipal election near Long distance two isn't working. Oh, yes, it is. Some idiot put this on. Yes, hello. Go ahead from Duncan. Yes, I just wanted to make two comments, Mr. Webster, to Mr. Vanderdam. One was that I've got brick shares and I'm going to hang on to them. Good for you. And the second one was we had the fortune of going up island Monday morning and followed your train. And, and uh, the only comment to make was, have you seen the conditions of the coach that the ordinary people travel in? Which coach, which train, PGE or Esquimalt and Nanaimo? Esquimalt and Nanaimo. Well, two. How is it, Willie? I don't know. I've not ridden the coach. I don't know what shape In one it's word, ma'am, what's wrong with the coach? It's completely filthy, and it's breaking down. We rode back on the other one, and it was beautiful. Well, thank you for not being on the topic. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning, Jack. Yes. Mr. Vanderzam. Good morning. Um, I have a letter of yours, Mr. Vanderzam, which states responsibility for land use matters rests with the local municipal council and my authority to intervene in this area is limited. Now, Ms. Mr. Van Der Zand, on the one hand, you refuse to interfere in this area's problem regarding intensive farming of pigs, saying that it is our problem and we must resolve it here by council. On the other hand, you refuse to sign the council's uh, uh, plan by law presented for your approval in Chilliwack. Hold on a second, uh, little back. Please Hold please on, ma'am. I'm not going to cut you off, just a second. Thank you. I, I heard you make some statement about pig farming in Chilliwack. What is it? Okay, well, the uh, Chilliwack Municipal Council has prepared and given three readings to a bylaw which would limit the establishment of piggeries in the Chilliwack area, to a degree at least, by making it just a little tougher, just a setting forth a set of regulations. I don't necessarily disagree with the council on that. They sent the bylaw to me for approval because it's in a floodplain area and I'm required to approve it under section 187 of the Municipal Act. However, I advised the council that perhaps I should delay the approval of it and that possibly I could meet with them and the BC Federation of Agriculture to determine how the new planning act could address some of the problems that the people in Chilliwack okay, were concerned got about. That. Now your problem ma'am is that you want or don't want the piggery next door? I live on um, two and a quarter acres paying residential taxes. Ah, uh -huh, and somebody's got a piggery next door. I started this caper four years ago. I remember having you on there at the time, ma'am. Yeah, asking for a bylaw. I've been working on it for four years, and I was repeatedly told, not just by Mr. Van Der Zandt, but other members of the legislature, that it was hands-off to them. It was a municipal 
problem and had to be dealt with by the municipal, uh, the mayor and the council. It still is, ma'am. I'm not done, suggesting it's... And now it's... he refuses to sign it. Now, tell me, where are we living? That's it. Why? Why don't you sign it? I mean, I know this particular case, I think, yes, from way yes, back. Yes, probably, and I've withheld the signing of it, and I've asked instead that I have a meeting with the Chilliwack Council and the BC Federation of Agriculture to discuss their proposed bylaw in light of our proposed new planning act and the bc federation of agriculture certainly is concerned about the people okay that are in the this farming. woman is mad at you because finally the municipality prepared to buy law and for some strange and obtuse reason you won't sign it there's an awful lot of guys in chilliwack with pig farms uh, that have been making their living doing this for many years that are very upset because they're going to be zone non-conforming, which means they that all of their investment it. is down the tube yeah, should the place burn last down. Last so there is a problem, eh? We've got to look at both sides. Last remark from you, ma'am. The original green zone bylaw was passed with an acreage limit, or not passed, was suggested by our council with an acreage limitation of 20 acres. Ma'am, I have not the time to go into it now. You've had the minister, he's going to arrange a meeting. I'm conforming now. That's right, ma'am. I can't spend the whole program on pig farms in Chilliwack. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Van de Zem. Good morning. I live in sunny Richmond, and I would like to know what your plans are for the LRT system in Richmond. You're talking about the elevated plan out to Newestminster. Is that feasible? Uh, in the Richmond area as well, and how high above the ground uh, are these elevated uh, tracks that you're talking about? Well, an elevated system, be it the ALRT, for lack of a better term, and that means advanced or automated light rapid transit, as opposed to LRT, which is light rapid transit, conventional. There's also monorail which again is another proposal that we've not seriously looked at yet because we're still seeking information well, like on it. 20 feet above the ground. They're about 18, 20 feet above the ground, fair enough. I could have said that. Well, wait a minute now, but the gentleman also wanted to know if the system could in fact serve the Richmond area, and obviously it can very well. Somewhere down the pike or down the monorail when you finally stop we fighting. We need it. Race. I was in a lineup this morning all the way from 176th Street in Surrey to the Portman Bridge for three quarters of an hour. We need light rail or light rapid transit in whatever form, and we need it soon. Do you really think traffic is heavy on the lower mainland? Well, it's not as bad as it is in other areas, certainly not, but there are times, and certainly now is the time to prepare for the future, not to wait until the crisis is upon us. Agreed. But you, you know, instead of just answering the question, you go all the way around in your light rapid transit, and then you come to 18 or 20 feet. I wanted to talk feet. about light rapid transit. You never gave me an opportunity to speak on light rapid transit. Well, I'd hate to have you and Volrich in the same program about it's important UTA. to the people of British Columbia, especially the Lower Mainland. However, I agree. Anyway, uh, the downtown businessmen of Vancouver, thank you for your big contributions towards what was to be the glass slipper. And there's now going to be an eyesore on the waterfront at PBC. You think it's going to be an eyesore? Well, when I, if we, even Marathon don't like it. And if they don't like it, maybe it's a, Maybe if Marathon doesn't like it, it isn't so bad. Have you ever thought of that? Always think of that. Anyway, once we see the avenue of the provinces in Transfer 86 and Paul Manning's dream child. Great. Can I get a job like that one day, please? Can I get appointed to a commission? I think I'm benign well, enough now. You consider your qualifications. Could I sit on a commission as Commissioner Webster? I wouldn't last five minutes after the break. <laughs> We have one final segment with Bill van der Zandt. Just because I'm smiling at him doesn't necessarily mean that I like his politics or the way his government is run. Is that agreed, Willie? Yeah, but deep down you do. No, you I love us. No, you I know don't. that what's, ha I what's happening I distrust all of you. Is, well, come I, I think I your government that. could do with a couple of good public inquiries, a couple of royal commissions and an election. And then we'll get the other people who will be three feet off the ground and spend well, the money like water. Of course, an election is the best public inquiry, but don't have them too often. I've got time for about eight short, sharp comments, please. I don't want good morning, Mr. Van der Zama, you're there, this and that and the next thing. Just a short political comment to Bill Van der Zama, then on to the next one. Go ahead, please. Um, I'm talking about the uh, uh, having more than one vote. Um, Are you for it or against it? You're only one person, and even though you have money to get another store or another office, you're going to make money, so you're entitled to pay taxes. So you want, you want the extra votes for corporate renters? That's right. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead, please. 
Jack. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you and then Mr. Be- uh, Van Der Zandt. Your, your, uh, Bre- I have Breck stock, which uh, the NDP wants us to stop him buying uh, Kaiser. Kaisers. What's your question? Well, if you if you had a million shares and sold them to ten of us, uh, would you then would we with the shares we had would we say to you you cannot spend that money? We have the stock and we control your money too. No, you're too complicated to understand. No, it. it makes sense. No, it doesn't. Well, he's really saying that the government should keep hands off and that in fact perhaps it is good for British Columbia to have control over that major resource through a British Columbia company. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I. Th- I think, Mr. Van Der Zem, you're being a little bit of a hypocrite on pro-life. Uh, after all, you people uh, aren't looking after the people that made the country, the old people. This one to ten ratio in extended care is not good enough. It's certainly not good enough for... Okay, you made your point. Go well, ahead. In response very quickly to the gentleman, before we became government, there was no long-term care program. So what he's saying is not correct. Next call. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'd like to speak to the Honorable uh, Minister. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Van Azel, what's this about another study for uh, light rapid transit? We've oh, please. We... No, no more studies. No, more, no more studies. Will you make an arbitrary decision if you have to? We will make a decision. Will you make an arbitrary decision? If we have to, we will. In other words, the hell with the UTA. I read... In They're the... involved in this, and so is the GVRD, but decisions will be made, will have to be made. No more studies. We've done enough studies. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning. Um, last Tuesday at Vancouver City Council, there was a motion passed by a vote of 10 to 1 for the second time to request an amendment to the Charter to allow Vancouver to establish a bylaw that would outlaw discrimination against those with children with, concerning rental housing. It's outlawed now under the Human Rights Act. No, it's not. That's the whole problem. No? Yes or no? I thought it was. Certainly, uh, that's been my impression right along. But if this gentleman has some particulars that I'm not aware of, please mail them to me. Go ahead, please. Hello, uh, Jack uh, and Mr. Van der Sam. Uh, I used to run the Benarail plane, as I once told you down in your office. Oh, hold on. This is a man who invented a monorail in Glasgow, Scotland, or worked the Benarail plane in 1932, 1934. The Benarail plane is no longer in existence, and he's getting kind of old himself. Go ahead, please. Well, uh, uh, regarding the Benny Real... Oh, I thought, no. <laughs> Thanks and good morning. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mr. Van Der Zand. Yes, good morning. I uh, would like to find out what's going on as far as when the, when the municipalities are... Uh, Hold on, please. Uh, what does he want to talk about? Wow, you didn't let him finish. I don't and, know. And uh, the... Uh, said that they will put a surcharge on, on gas, three cents. Oh, yeah, the three oh, cent okay. gas business. Yes, did you straighten right. that away? Did you yes, help yes. these people who were being unfairly we penalized by the arbitrary municipal boundaries? That's correct. You did. Thank yes, you. we did. Go ahead, please. Mr. Webster, Mr. Yep. Vanders, how are you today? Not too bad, thanks. Uh, I'm just calling too? in connection with... Oh, by the way, how are you? Oh, I'll probably... Are you keeping another. well? <laughs> is your wife and kids okay? My wife is fine and my daughter is fine. Okay, get the point. All right, Mr. Van Der Zem, your uh, salaries that you quoted on the television this morning are $58,000 a year plus your dental plan. Yeah. Now, the thing is, and he's in the expansion. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, the thing that gets to me is, uh, Mr. Webster, yourself as a private contractor and paying your own, I'm wondering if you'd be kind of concerned about what your salary would be. I don't understand this question. Well, you're, you're worried about Mr. About He's in the public trough. Thousand dollars a year plus. He's this. in the public trough. Right. All right. Now the thing is that yourself as a contractor and paying your own, I think, is a very nice idea. But the thing is, would your would your salaries happen to exceed Bill Vanderzams? Probably make more money gross than he does, not counting his vast private wealth and interest. <laughs> well, but that's not the point. I'm not in the public trough and mind your own business. <laughs> the taxes don't go up because of what any money I make. And away you go and say hello to your wife and daughter. I don't waste my time again saying, how are you this morning? I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> go ahead, please. Hello, uh, I'm an independent uh, trucker. I would like to know why we have to pay this year um, uh, three cents a liter tax for the rapid transit. Which we never burn the fuel in, in this area. We burn it all over B.C. And we're paying the tax on... Uh, for Good question. Answer it, please. It's three cents a gallon when you tank in the greater Vancouver area, and it's to help pay for transit. The alternatives are a hydro surcharge, a tremendously increased rate on the buses, or a property tax. 
I have a, are you any good as a reporter? You've got a civil servant who can find this out for me, haven't you? What do you know about the uh, transit tax? Yeah. What do you know about it? I know, I know about it, yes. I know. How is it applied? It's applied three cents per gallon. No, no, I'm talking about the one on your, your BC Hydro Bill. Okay, well, on the BC Hydro Bill, depending on where you are, now, if you're in Victoria or on the Salt Spring Islands, the whole of the charge is on the Hydro Bill. And uh, you're playing, paying a flat sum so much per month if you're a residential unit and so much per month or so much as a portion of your utilization of is electricity it, if you're a commercial. Is it a fact that on the hydro portion of your transit tax, it's based on the number of meters? It was, but we changed that because that was ridiculous, but that's how it initially was and that caused nothing but trouble. So we've now changed it to say a residential unit. And that could be 10 acres with a meter at the barn and a meter at the house. When did you change that? In uh, August, early August. Just done. And was, it goes into effect October 1st. I'm too late in my story because I was going to tell you, if you hadn't known, that there are some housing units with maybe 2,000 units paying one tiny tax. Terrible, absolutely crazy. Place on the North because Shore. Because they got one meter. Because they got one meter. Whereas the city of Vancouver pays on each group of streetlights. Because each group of streetlights has a meter. That's correct. So yeah. we've... We've on other places where you've got 2,000 units, there are 2,000 taxis. So now you're charging everybody Every who gets a light bill. Every residential unit. Everybody who gets a light bill that if they... Well, not everybody who gets a light bill, because you could have two meters on one property, thus two light bills. It's every residential unit. Okay. Fair okay. enough. Good change. Yeah, we know we act quickly. Well, I hadn't even told you about it. How come you knew about it? <laughs> Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Webster. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Van der Zalm, this is Mr. Van der Kerkhoff phoning. Yes, sir. And, um, as you are aware, that as your ministry has allowed uh, Canadian invention to go to the United States. Whose invention? Uh, Mr. Van der Kerkhoff's ventilated beehive. Well, <laughs> was, uh, just a moment, please. Did you allow a ventilated beehive to go to the United States? Well, I know Mr. Van der Kerkhoff, perhaps a year or two ago, made a presentation to me for this That's new type of beehive. That's not fair to raise this on the air when I know nothing about it. You should have brought down a ventilated beehive, let me see it. The one thing I insist upon in PCTV is that all beehives are ventilated. Now, let me know about it before you ask me on the air about it. <laughs> you ventilated beehive, you. Maybe a good invention. Sure. Do you run bees too? No, I don't. It's not in my ministry, but I did pass it on for the gentleman. My uh, constituency office is fairly convenient to most people, regardless of what constituency they're in or what political party represents them. So I get a lot of people from all over the Lower Mainland, and I try and do my best for them. Well, except for making an enemy of Curtis, here's, which he did this morning. You obviously don't like his act or his official's act, and you want no part of it. Right? That's correct, yes. And your planning act is almost as corporate state-minded as his financial administration white paper. Uh, well, you know, uh, there may be things about the planning act that he or other people doesn't, don't like, and that perhaps uh, ought to be changed, depending on what the feeling is generally. And the administration act, incidentally, financial administration no, act, may time. have a lot of good parts to I've it. I've only got time to sum yeah, up. Right. Okay. Bill Van der Zam did not say he's definitely running for leader if Bill Bennett leaves the scene. That's correct, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. He yes. did not say it. That's right. He did not say it. After the break. Mm -hmm.